hear it. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and you with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, we are celebrating together, spirituality together, this fifth Sunday of Easter, our special season. Season what we would like to rejoice because Jesus resurrected for us. Also, what I can say, a little bit rejoice because we hope that like ending this Easter season to celebrate Pentecost Easter the last weekend of May, I hope that we will physically together celebrate in our church. And today, if we look in our readings, first we have to say thanks to God for our holy deacons, because in, we can see in the first reading today, moment of establishing diaconate in our church history. What in special way today and this time we say to God thanks for our deacons, our deacons who are here, Andy, Deacon George, Deacon Jay, and also Deacon Paul and Deacon Tom, who are our parishioners. And uh, this time, what I said, like really Easter time, really rejoicing time, but also time that we have to ask ourselves what we want to do, where we want to go, because this is difficult time in our daily life and situation that we can see about this pandemic. But if we go deeper to reflect gospel today, we can easily find answer. Jesus reminds us, I am the life, I am the truth, and I am the way for each of us. If we are not sure where we are going, just come back to Jesus and He will remind us that He is the way. At the beginning of this Eucharist, just look in our life, what happened in passing week, we can find really easy also that we are not perfect, that we are sometimes really far from Jesus' way. Just this moment of the beginning of this Eucharist, tell to him, sorry for our sins, ask for forgiveness. Right. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed. Do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my own grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, your Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, earth peace and people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading 
is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at tables. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted and the to, acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Hemon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Response will be, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise with the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the heart. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, Lord let, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him upon those who hope in his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in the spirit in despite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings but chosen and precious in the sight of God, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble and disobeyed the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his, of his own so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? 
Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you also will know my Father. From now on, you do not know him. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Over the past month or so, Facebook has been filled with people posting their high school pictures when they were seniors in solidarity and support of the current high school seniors. Some people have also posted their senior year pictures alongside that of their parents' senior year pictures. And the resemblance has been remarkable. Today's readings are an account of what happened with the apostles and their encounter with the risen Jesus. The questions they raised and the requests they made by the apostles are the same questions and the same requests that we make and that we have made, especially in the past couple months that we have had to stay at home. In today's gospel, Philip pleads with Jesus to show us the Father, and that will be enough. To which Jesus replies, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Just as we are able to see the physical resemblance in the pictures of our children and of ourselves, or of ourselves and our parents, we are also able to see the Father, as Jesus said. For as we know, we are all created in the image and likeness of God. Jesus' teachings in today's Gospel did not stop here, though. Jesus knew that the apostles were frightened that they had severe doubts about everything they knew and what they believed. They were uncertain, and they did not have control of what was happening in the world around them. So he came to them and told the apostles, just as he is telling each of us today, as he is telling you and me, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. Let me say this again. Jesus really tells us, and let this sink into your heart. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. Just as the apostles faced doubts and uncertainties, we too face our own doubts and our own uncertainties. We are truly living in extraordinary times. Times when businesses are closed and we are told by the government to stay at home. Times when we are told not to be close to or to greet others with a handshake or with a hug. Times when we are learning by logging in on the computer and not going to school. Times when more people are working from home than they are at their normal workplace. And times when our church is closed and we can't receive the Holy Eucharist. And yet, in all these times, Jesus is present and telling each and every one of us, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. With the reassurance from Jesus that he is in the Father and the Father is in him, Jesus promised that he would send to us an advocate, the Holy Spirit, to help the apostles carry out their mission 
of spreading the good news and bringing and being Christ to others. Inspired with this confidence and reassurance, the apostles overcame their doubts, their uncertainties, and their fears, and told others about our loving and merciful Father and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the number of believers began to grow at an amazing rate, so much so that the apostles decided that they needed help they needed people to help them. People who, as we heard in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, were good people, people filled with the Spirit, who were charged with ministering to widows, orphans, and the marginalized. These were called, they were called upon to be the image and the presence of Christ the servant to everyone they encountered, so that the apostles could sacramentally minister to the people and break open the word. These seven men were the first deacons of our church, and for that, we are very thankful. The calling of the deacons continues to this day to meet people where they are and to bring Christ to them. The example set by the first deacons continues to this day as I, along with Deacon Andy and Deacon Jay, and all of our brother deacons continue to try to copy and emulate the example of loving others and meeting people where they are and being Christ the servant by assisting them in their lives and on this journey that we call life. The number of converts to the religion greatly increased with the help of the first seven deacons. And the number of people that are served and ministered continues to increase with the help of our present-day deacons. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to minister to all of you and to others and for you permitting us to be a part of your lives and for the privilege that we are extremely thankful to God and to you and you must know that you will remain forever in our daily thoughts and prayers Jesus told the Apostles in the gospel that he is the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through Him. So if we can set aside our doubts, our uncertainties, and our fears, and let that Jesus' words truly fill our minds and hearts, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. We will be permitted to enter eternal life with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I know that these words have not fallen on deaf ears. I have heard and have seen so many of you being there and helping one another in times of trouble and times of need, especially during this pandemic crisis. By you being there for others, you too are living out the good news and bringing Christ to others and to the world which so desperately needs his presence. So thank you for your kindness your presence, your actions, and your belief in Jesus. Know that you're, by your actions, we not only see you, but we see the face of Jesus and God the Father. Today also is a special day in which we get to honor and thank our mothers, our first teachers of the faith, those mothers that are still living among us, and those mothers that are living with Jesus in heaven. We thank them for their love, the sacrifices they have made for us, and for the example and being Christ for us. Without our mothers, we would not be the people that we are today. So take a moment today and wish them a happy Mother's Day. Actually, take more than a mere moment to visit or call and talk with them in words to also pray for them and truly give thanks for everything that they have done. And in all of this, and in all things, please remember Jesus' words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. Have faith in Jesus, and he will never let you down. He will help all of us get through these challenging times until we can gather as a community of friends and a community of believers in the near future. And... If we are preparing for the following Jesus' words, 
He will prepare a place for us, as he told us in the gospel, so that where he is, which is in heaven, we also will be. May God continue to bless and be with you all. One God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We faith in our Almighty Father, and we believe that He will give us His gift and His grace. And now, this way, we send to Him our petitions. For all of us baptized into Christ's Church and the royal priesthood, may the Lord continue to increase our faith for the sake of His kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority, May God's grace enable them to lead with integrity, protecting life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For any who are struggling to believe, and for those who are weak in faith, may Christ speak to their troubled hearts and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have been welcomed into the church this Easter season, May the Holy Spirit continue to form them as living stones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the infirm, the lonely, and those who don't have anyone to pray for them today. Remember those commended to our parish list of the sick as well. They continue to receive and experience the healing hand of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. Remember Helen Troa, who died and funeral was this past Friday. We also remember Bertha Strzewski, Ken Jans, as well as a special intention. May he who has prepared a place for them welcome them to the splendor of their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have affected, been affected by the pandemic virus, that with the faith and hope in Jesus, that he will continue to see us through, and we are there to walk and help with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We also pray for all of our mothers on this weekend, that we give them thanks, and we also give thanks to our Heavenly Mother, our Blessed Virgin, that she continues to lead us and to always listen to the words of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for those prayers we hold within the silence of our minds and our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, you know everything what we need before us, 
we ask you give us everything what we need according to your will well, this through Jesus Christ, who is our way and is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant you pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by the worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit, spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time of all to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the light of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift of praise by sending down your spirit upon them like the true hope, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
and I believe you can help me end. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially member Bertha Struzewski, Ken James and Helen Troham, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Amen. your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just what Sunday, brothers and sisters, remind you at first that we are together. Spirituality, we feel that we are close to each other. In a special way, we remember each of us, each of our family, St. Cyprian family members by our prayer. What I, the more information, more signals that we stay in this prayer chain of this special time between 3 and 4 p.m., especially pray for uh, mercy, the world, and mercy for each of us, this Divine Mercy Chaplet and Rosary Prayer Litany and other prayers. Because we, we feel how strong we are together. And we hope, pray also, this intention that exactly what is some signal that Pascal and Pentecost will celebrate really in church, physically in church. Pray also on this intention that God will bless us and pray that we will be closer to each other. And what I asked from the beginning, pray for our deacons. Thanks to God for the accolade and pray for more occasion to the Akali priesthood too. As Kayun I said, uh, open to each other and uh, if you know that somebody needs some help, call to our parish. What I just remind you, I check a couple of times a day our uh, phone call messages and our phone call and uh, emails and uh, check website information because you can find really Information, present information on our website, first website. I hope that also you watch this, this mass. And remember that coming week, Wednesday, this is May 13, this is 103 years anniversary of first apparition Blessed Mother in Fatima. We have a wonderful girl coming in this day. I hope that whether be nice, you can come visit uh, here, a special place, and pray for her intercession that also she will be as a, as a good our mother and uh, again for each Sunday I will say thanks for your support financial support we are really good as a family members we keep our parish alive with this wonderful sign and usually this day uh, the second Sunday of May we in our church wanted to get what we did, what we gave to our mothers, special flowers. But today, spirituality, we sent to each mother flowers. But as a special flower, I hope that we can say together to each mother, Hail Mary, a special prayer, what we ask for the intercession of Blessed Mother to special care to each of our mothers. Could we say it together? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And receive final blessing uh, and a special like, double blessing to our mothers. Remember them, not only this time, honor them, but every day, because mothers they have special place in our family. And also we ask for eternal rest to mothers who are now from God. The Lord be with you and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless our mothers in special way who are around us that we as the children honor them and care about them that they will really feel that they are mothers and they are good mothers and also for mothers who are now in God's place that they will receive special grace and pray place what is prepared for them. Almighty God bless each mother in the world that they will find example in Blessed Mother, our best mother and be good to each of us and also that we will be good to them. May Almighty God bless each of you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Masters in it, go in peace, serving the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.